Welcome back to my studio. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to make Briar Rose's boned bodice from Sleeping Beauty. The techniques used in this video can be transferred to bodices for ball gowns, and they can even create a great foundation for future corsetry work. To start out, you will need about a yard of fashion fabric. I used velvet for this, a yard of lining, four to five yards of plastic boning or industrial strength zip ties, 1.5 yards fusible interfacing, thread, at least 24 grommet sets, you'll need more if you have a longer torso. I used and modified the McCall's 6343 pattern. It's an older pattern that I've had in my stash for ages and I also used it on Ariel's blue dress ages ago. The first thing I did was trace the front and side front pieces onto pattern paper, making sure to add all the markings from the piece. When I took piece one and drew it out, um, I took this front curve, this center front line, and I brought it up one inch. And then I went to this side and I took that down one inch and I created a line that goes straight across from there. Then I measured that line in by one and a half inches. And then I also measured down this point two and a half inches and connected those two points. So top, center, front to create this kind of like V, but also have this straight across piece for here because we want the bodice to be kind of square with this really rugged like triangle taken out of it. And then we'll fill it with some lace or not lace, uh, some, we'll fill it once we get to that point. So now that I took this down one full inch, I need to take this down one full inch and I need it to meet up with this piece here versus a curve like that. Cause again, we're trying to get a very boxy fit, which is very strange, but I hope it works. So now we're just going to take this and we're just going to go like that. And that's going to be, these are going to be our new pieces. So we're going to cut this out and I'm going to label this as two. This is one. This is going to be center front. And then on fold. Starting with the lining fabric, I cut out the pieces and then again on the interfacing. Now I'm going to use the lining pieces to cut out the velvet. Because the nature of velvet, I cut each piece out individually instead of folding it to ensure that all the pieces are getting cut on the grain line. Velvet can also shift while cutting it and I don't want that to happen, so I cut them out one by one. Once all the pieces are cut out, I'm going to press my fabric and then I'm going to adhere the interfacing to the lining by pressing the two together on a medium heat setting. The purpose of the interfacing is to add stability to the lining fabric. I can already say that this lining fabric I found in my stash is not the best fabric and is kind of miserable to work with, but luckily it's on the inside of the garment so no one will see it. Once everything is cut out and pressed, I'm going to mark my pieces on the wrong side of the fabric with chalk. Now, starting at the center front, I will pin the pieces together. The side front will be pinned to the center front, lining up the markings, then the side back will be pinned to the side front, and finally the back will be pinned to the side back. For the velvet, I try to place my pins about a quarter inch of the, away from the edge going parallel with the seam so that any punctures made in the fabric will be enclosed in the seam. Once everything is pinned, I'll repeat this same process on the lining fabric so that I can sew everything at the same time. Now, I brought my pinned pieces over to my sewing machine and starting with the lining, I stitched all the pieces together at three quarters of an inch seam allowance. Normally, I do five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but the last time I used this pattern, the bodice was slightly big, so I chose to make my allowance uh, three quarters of an inch and before sewing the velvet, I wrapped the lining section around my waist to see how it fit. This change seemed to work, so I moved on to sewing the velvet. 
I took the velvet much slower than the lining and I stitched it on a three millimeter stitch length so that my needle had a bit more room to go through the fabric. I also made sure to stitch my velvet pieces with a universal 80-12 needle and the stitches looked great to me. With the lining section, I'm going to press all the seams open. I used my pressing ham to help with the curves on this, and this is where the lining fabric shows its true, awful colors. It's not the worst fabric, but it was pretty difficult to press since any heat above the low setting would burn it, but to get a really crisp pressing, I had to hold it on there for longer, and it was just not very fun to work with. Once I was done pressing the seams open, I grabbed my pins and pinned the pieces down to create the boning channels. Then I raised the heat on my iron and went to town on pressing the velvet seams open. This was much easier to do than on the lining. Back to the sewing machine to stitch down those boning channels. I did this on a four millimeter stitch and made sure to stay about a half an inch away from the seam allowance so that my boning could slide into the channel with ease. All right, so moving on to the boning. I highly recommend using paper or craft scissors for this. I have a really old pair of fabric scissors that I use for cutting patterns and paper stuff since they're not worth sharpening to me, and I'll be using those on my plastic pieces. To measure your boning pieces, I like to hold my plastic to the channel, starting at a half an inch from the top and ending at a half an inch from the bottom. If you would like to also use a tape measure and then just subtract one, you can do that too. Now I place my boning pieces into the channels as a placeholder here, but once all of my bones are cut, I clip the corners and then I file them down with a glass nail file. I was being super lazy this day and filed them while, while watching YouTube videos, so I didn't film this step, but filing plastic is pretty simple as long as you clip the corners to start off your rounded edge. Then once the bones are fill, filed down, you can place them back in their channels to live forever. Before sewing the velvet to the lining, I measured in the V cutout so that I could start preparing the velvet strips that make up the detail inside the V cutout. I decided on cutting three strips of fabric that were seven inches long by two inches wide, and I cut that out of my velvet using my rotary tool. I pinned these strips right sides together. Then I stitched these at a half inch seam allowance and I turned the strips right side out so that I would have the design that I needed. After turning them, I pressed them flat and set them aside. Now with right sides together, I pinned the velvet piece to the lining piece, making sure to line up all the seams and to pin the seams open while I do so. I also took and clipped into the V about half an inch to help create a more clear V when I turned the piece, and I also stopped pinning about one inch away from the edge so that I could fold it inside at the end. I made sure to repeat the process on the bottom of the bodice as well, and then I took it over to my sewing machine. Then with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length, I sew the bodice top and bottom together, making sure to keep those seams flat as I sew over them. Now I will trim the top and bottom seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch and then flip the entire piece so that the right sides are showing and the wrong sides are inside the two layers of fabric. On the inside of the bodice, I hand stitched the strips down, starting with the one at the top and then moving to the bottom. I placed these down first to get an idea of what they would look like, and then once I got the figuration I wanted, I pinned them in place, and using a whip stitch, I stitched them down. This can be done by a machine, but the stitching would be seen on the top, so if you go this route, I would definitely recommend just doing an entire top stitching line around the top and bottom of the bodice. I personally didn't want to have a top stitching line, so I hand stitched this down. The last step before setting the grommets is to fold the back edges in by half an inch. When sewing the top and the bottom seams, I left an inch on each side so that I could fold this in and top stitch these sides down. To mark my grommets, I start from the top 
and one inch, every single inch down, I mark it with a water soluble pencil. Then I take my hole punch and I punch the hole that I have marked and I will follow up with my awl and I will push my awl through to get the gap open. The velvet side, I'm going to place the grommet piece through the other side so that it will poke through to the bottom and then I will place my flat piece on top of this and I will hammer it down using my grommet tool and a hammer. Then I'll take it out and make sure it looks good on both sides and clean it up a bit and move on to the next one. And I repeat this at least 20 times throughout the whole process. Um, so we're not gonna watch all of that. <laughs> All right, and there we have it, the finished bodice with the little V cutout. We've got our little details um, on the cutout. It looks pretty square, just how I had hoped it to. Uh, I have it laced up in the back just with satin ribbon, and I'm pretty happy with it. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and let me know what you would like to see in the comments below. Otherwise, happy sewing, and I'll see you next time.